Welcome to Heads Up Emergency Medicine. This is an introductory talk designed to give you an insight into the emergency medicine application process and also to give you some pointers uh, to enhance your application in advance. It's designed for those of you who are thinking about applying to emergency medicine but perhaps aren't quite decided yet. As an introduction to myself, my name is Daniel Beasley. I am a uh, offer holder for acute care common stem emergency medicine training, which I will start in August 2023. Please feel free to use my email address uh, on the slide there if you have any questions uh, following the talk. I'll be more than happy to try and give you some additional advice. As I, as I said, this talk is designed for people who are considering applying to emergency medicine, but perhaps aren't quite decided. So to discuss some advantages and challenges of working in emergency medicine. So firstly, um, among the advantages, you will be working with multiple allied healthcare professionals on a daily basis, including nurses, advanced care practitioners and paramedics when receiving handover. And this is a fantastic um, teamwork environment to work in with multiple other colleagues around you. On the ACCS training pathway, you will be learning multiple specialist practical skills, including airway management, procedural sedation, and also gaining invasive uh, IV access, um, for example, arterial or central venous lines. You will be required to liaise with multiple other specialties within the hospital when admitting patients. This includes the medical, surgical, and sometimes intensive care teams as well. Again, it's a fantastic opportunity to learn from those other specialties when discussing patients. And finally, you do have the opportunity to subspecialize um, within emergency medicine, um, and there are also opportunities to gain dual accreditation in intensive care medicine alongside emergency medicine. Some of the challenges um, of working in A&E, um, it goes without saying it is a very busy and pressurized environment, and this won't necessarily suit everybody. You will be required to manage multiple unwell patients simultaneously, um, and there will be a high demand on your prioritization skills. At the moment, um, the NHS is particularly busy, as we all know, and there are some systemic barriers um, to providing efficient patient care um, sometimes. This includes very limited space um, to see patients um, when the department is particularly busy. And this is something to consider um, in terms of the working environment when you are applying to A&E. Some people prefer to follow the patient journey all the way through till discharge. Um, typically in A&E, when you have handed over the patient to the um, admitting team, your contact with the patient tends to end there. However, this can be overcome by keeping um, track of patients' notes um, and their details confidentially. And then you can follow their journey um, by discussing with the managing team should you want to uh, reflect on a particular case and learn from it. And finally, it will be a busy time training and um, the rota will include weekends and nights and um, all the way up to uh, being a senior registrar. So to give you an overview of the training program as a timeline, um, the small boxes here equate to one year in the timeline. So if we imagine that you're currently in F2 um, and you're considering applying for specialty training to start next year. The key thing here is to emphasize the difference between core training and run through training and also the similarities. So the acute care common STEM refers to the first two years of either core or run through training um, highlighted in the red box here. So whether you do core or run through training, you will have CT or ST1, which consists of six months of acute medicine, six months of emergency medicine, followed by CT or ST2, which consists of six months of anesthetics and six months of intensive care medicine. For the emergency medicine pathway, you will then have a full year, which is ST3 or CT3, um, of emergency medicine, which includes paediatric emergency medicine. If you've completed core training and you want to begin at ST4, you will need to reapply as a competitive step at this point um, with a reapplication and another interview. However, if you accepted run-through training um, before you accept a uh, an emergency medicine training post, you will then automatically at this point be offered an ST4 uh, training post. Don't forget though that you're not locked in for the full six years without any pauses um, with the run-through training program. There are opportunities at this point for sub-specializing or to take out of program um, or OOP opportunities. Finally, to mention the defined route of entry into emergency medicine. So if you've completed two years of UK core surgical training or two years of a different ACCS specialty, for example, inter uh, internal medicine or anaesthetics, you can enter emergency medicine uh, at the ST3 level if you have completed the sufficient competencies. 
So we'll imagine now that you've completed either CT1 to 3, your core training, or ST1 to 3 as part of the run through program. At this point, you may choose to continue straight on to ST4, um, whether you have to reapply after core training or you continue automatically after run through training. At the end of the ST4, 5 and 6 years, you will come out with a CCT, um, which is a certificate of completion of training in emergency medicine. However, you may choose to subspecialize um, in either pre-hospital medicine or pediatric emergency medicine. This will obviously require additional time um, as a trainee, usually an additional year um, in the ST4 to 6 years. And at the end of this, you'll come out with a CCT in emergency medicine with subspecialty recognition. Finally, um, as mentioned before, you may choose to take the opportunity to gain dual accreditation with intensive care medicine. And again, this will require additional time as a trainee. But at the end of that, you'll come out with a dual CCT in emergency medicine and intensive care medicine. Don't forget, um, between ST3 or CT3 and ST4, there are opportunities for out of program opportunities. So to give you a, a rough overview of the application process itself, remember this is relevant and specific for the uh, application process that I experienced in 2023. Um, so do check online when you're applying whether the process has changed slightly. So the applications opened on Oriel, um, which is the same portal you would have used for your foundation applications um, in November. The deadline came at the start of December to submit the application. This was followed by the MSRA exam in January, and then interviews were offered, depending on your MSRA score, between February and March. And hopefully um, by late March or early April, you will receive an offer on Oriel. So just to highlight the uh, application on Oriel itself, there aren't any specific points um, published where you can uh, calculate your total score. However, there are white space questions um, to, uh, to include in the application. So these cover things like uh, additional degrees as well as your medical degree and qualifications, any prizes um, which you were awarded at medical school or postgraduate prizes, uh, presentations, posters and publications. Um, there's a large space available to talk about your teaching experience, any quality improvement projects, audit or research. And don't forget, they are also asking about um, achievements specific to uh, emergency medicine. And then finally, um, more broadly, any achievements outside of medicine which you would like to mention in your application. Having submitted the oral application, um, there is a shortlist cutoff score um, in the MSRA. So those candidates who score above this cutoff score will be offered an interview. Remember that your overall application score um, is a combination of the interview and MSRA. The interview contributes 60% to the overall score. MSRA contributes 40% to your overall score. For 2022, the competition ratio was 4.45. So this means 4.45 applicants to each post available. So to briefly mention the multi-specialty recruitment assessment in more detail, this initially was uh, an assessment designed for general practice applicants. But as you can see, um, as of 2023, it's now been opened up to uh, many more specialties as part of their application process. So the MSRA consists of two uh, papers, um, the first of which is professional dilemmas. So this is 50 scenarios or questions to complete within 95 minutes. It's very similar to the SJT, which you would have taken in your final year of medical school. As you can see in this example, you're given a scenario and then asked to rank um, five responses in order of appropriateness. The second paper is a clinical problem solving paper. This consists of 97 questions to complete in 75 minutes. As mentioned, um, this exam was designed for general practice applications at first, so it is very primary care focused in the content, as you can see from the examples below. Each paper contributes equally to your overall MSRA score for the exam. So to discuss the interview uh, in a bit more detail, remember this is specific for the 2023 process. So do check online when you're applying um, whether the interview process has changed at all. It's a panel interview um, occurring face to face in inverted commas because since COVID, it has now been carried out solely online and um, via MS Teams. Sometimes there may be a third panellist um, who is a lay person. They are just there to ensure um, the proper working of the interview process and they will not be um, assessing you. 
Your portfolio will not be directly reviewed in the interview, but you may be required to speak about your previous experiences. And usually you have approximately five questions which cover um, very broad domains like your motivation um, and your um, previous experience and insight into emergency medicine. Your personal insight, um, your own weaknesses, as well as uh, your own strengths and skills. And also your understanding of the ACCS curriculum and your understanding of what you're actually applying for um, in the interview. The caveats with the ethical scenario, sometimes um, it won't be asked at all, but quite often you may be given a clinical or a professional scenario which includes an ethical dilemma to address. So it won't necessarily be a direct ethical um, question, but it will be some sort of complex situation um, with an ethical problem. The final 10 minutes of the interview um, do not actually involve the candidate. They are 10 minutes available for the panel to cross-reference the content of your interview with your oral application in order to give you your overall score. Okay, so on to the most important slide um, of the presentation. What can you do to optimise your application now? So these domains are um, based on the ACCS Emergency Medicine Personal Specification. So do look it up online um, in order to uh, sort of carry out a personal assessment and think which domains am I lacking in? Um, for example, do I not have very much teaching experience? Um, and you can use your time uh, available to gain further experience in that specific domain. So they want to see that you have a commitment to the specialty and that you've shown an interest um, and gained an additional insight into the specialty you're applying for. You can do this by arranging taster days um, with a particular specialty. Um, don't forget that any conversation you have with a senior um, colleague about a particular specialty is worthwhile reflecting on and documenting in your portfolio. Do make sure you read the ACCS curriculum so that you know what you'll be learning over the next uh, three or, or uh, so years. You also can take the opportunity to sign up for the Royal College of Emergency Medicine learning modules, um, and you can also listen to the ARCHEM podcast for free. You can also subscribe to the Emergency Medicine Journal in order to read up-to-date articles and keep your, uh, your practice evidence-based. Uh, like any specialty, you will be expected to have some insight into um, audit um, and quality improvement processes. Um, and quite often at interview, you might be asked about the difference um, between an audit versus quality improvement project, um, which come under the overall heading of clinical governance. I should also mention, don't forget uh, the importance of teaching. Um, you can design your own teaching program, whether that is online tutorials or bedside teaching. Um, and it's also worthwhile remembering you can teach uh, medical students as well as junior colleagues as well on the ward. You will need to show off your additional qualifications and experience. Again, taster days are relevant for this. Um, you may want to take the opportunity to start preparing or even taking um, the uh, membership of Royal College of Emergency Medicine exams. And one particular thing I found helpful when I was applying um, was undergoing a um, ultrasound practical skills course. Um, it was an emergency medicine specific ultrasound course. And this gave me a fantastic um, thing to talk about at interview. And it also enhanced my practical skills. So when I was working in emergency medicine, um, I could start to practice those um, with real patients. Don't forget, um, you don't have to go straight on to training after F2. You can take um, some years out um, during which you might want to complete a clinical fellow job or um, gain extra experience by locuming in a particular department. Don't forget, you can maintain a portfolio. Even if you are a locum, you can ask to keep your Horus portfolio open and therefore you can continue to document and reflect on your learning experiences. And on that note, they want to see evidence of reflective practice. So do go back and review your portfolios from F1 and F2. Continue to write uh, reflections, even if you are locuming um, and you don't have an educational supervisor, you can take your own initiative and continue your own personal portfolio. It's also worth brainstorming what your specific uh, your specific learning needs are within emergency medicine. For example, uh, if you're not very confident with um, getting central access or uh, cannulation using an ultrasound, perhaps um, you can document that as a learning need. And then later uh, at interview, for example, you can discuss what steps you've taken to address those learning needs ahead of your application for emergency medicine. So all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for listening. I do hope that was helpful. Um, as I said, please email me um, if you uh, would like to um, ask for any additional advice. And best of luck to those of you who are applying for specialty posts in the future.